It's time for the Tyson Degenhardt Show with Boise State basketball star Tyson Degenhardt, sponsored by Idaho Central Credit Union. Find a branch near you or get more information at iccu.com. Now, here's Dyson Degenhardt with B.J. Reigns for another edition of the Dyson Degenhardt Show on Bronco Nation News. I failed you again, Tyson. I didn't remind you. That's In serious, you only gave me 10-minute warning, but uh, yeah, Jeremiah Dickey is not the guest for the last three episodes. It's said he's been the guest, and I totally forgot. Once again, on me, Idaho Central Credit Union, I apologize uh we forgot to update the intro we actually have good stuff for the intro too we've had some you know multiple guests we've had a lot of cool stuff so i promise by next week's episode we will have a brand new all tyson degenhardt episode the problem was i shouldn't have put jeremiah dickey i should have just made it generic so it would work for every episode and i tried to get cute for that one and then forgot it and that's the one that's now in there so um yeah this is the tyson degenhardt show my name is bj rains this is tyson degenhardt and no as it said in the intro our guest tonight is not Jeremiah Dickey. No offense to Jeremiah. We enjoyed that interview, but I am uh, very excited about tonight's interview, Tyson. First of all, how you doing, sir? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing great, man. Always enjoy catching up with you. We had to push off last week's episode for numerous reasons, but uh, the, the big reason was because we had to get our special guest this week. We're going to play it here in about 10 minutes. We already taped it. We're very excited about this. Fill our viewers in uh, on what we were doing yesterday. Yeah, so we were able to get an interview with uh, Taylor Green. I know he's been very heavily requested, one of our main guests that we wanted to get on the show, and we were fortunate enough to get a chance to interview him yesterday in the football recruiting lounge, right? The great view of the blue, and uh, very thankful for Taylor to take about 27 minutes of his time yesterday and a very uh, action-packed day with fall camp going on and practice and all that. So uh, very excited for you guys to hear this interview and looking forward to it. Now, we had a couple of comments on here already. Uh, Rudy says this, you interviewing uh, Taylor Green is essentially Luca interviewing Mahomes. That's quite a compliment, Rudy. I appreciate it. <laughs> uh, Nathan says, I'm here. I'm subscribed and I want my golf rounds. Nathan, we appreciate it. We are before we're going to get out of here. Thanks to uh, Tyson's NIL deal and our deal at Bronco Nation News with Timberstone Golf Course. We are going to give away a couple rounds of golf at Timberstone. So uh, stay tuned. And uh, I guess Tyson will just pick a good comment or we'll think of it. If anybody in the comment section has an idea, but if you want to play golf at Timberstone, let us know why you deserve it. We'll uh, get that to you. And also, I'm happy to report I got the uh, gift cards. We're giving away some Taco Bell gift cards for folks that subscribe. You see it at the bottom there. We've got a few more. I'll throw it. go ahead and throw a plug in there. we got about five left. If you subscribe for a uh, one-year subscription to Bronco Nation News while we're on the show here, we'll throw you a $20 gift card at Taco Bell. I've got about uh, 20 that I'm already sending out here, Tyson. I uh, stamped them, by the way. And how about this? Four states. Uh, in these 20, we have Idaho, we have Utah, we have Washington. By the way, do you have a Randall Degenhart in your family? That's my uncle. Hey, your uncle subscribed, and he's getting his uh, Taco Bell gift card sent to him. So thank you to uh, Randall Degenhart if you're watching. And, uh, and the uh, fourth one was Tennessee. So we have a Bronco Nation news subscriber in Tennessee. We appreciate you. And uh, – by the way, Nathan says he deserves it for the simple reason that he's from the same town as you. Yeah, there it it's is. Like an obvious choice. Do you know Nathan Carroll? I, I do not, but okay. it seems like I'm following in his footsteps. It All right. seems like. Well, again, we're going to talk to Taylor Green. We're very excited about that. We've taped the interview. Don't go anywhere. Taylor Green, Tyson Degenhart, a rare, rare one-on-one -on -one interview. You mentioned it was about 20 seven minutes uh give or take it was awesome really appreciate it we went over the time a little bit but we uh, pushed it because it was good stuff and uh again stay tuned and uh, let us know where you're watching from tonight by the way bill says he's watching in california let's uh let's get a little shout out what do you say tyson let's see where uh, folks are watching from we'll give some shout outs tonight and uh, have some fun here on the tyson degenhart show uh tyson uh we uh, had the chance you said to catch up with tail and green you said you were out there watching out uh, now Wholesome says there's 70 people watching right now, but that's just on YouTube. We got Facebook and Twitter. Uh, we're, we're higher than that. So uh, we'll, we're uh, doing great on the viewership tonight. We really appreciate it. And, again, 
you know, no offense, Tyson, but I think Taylor Green has something to do with the viewership tonight. I know folks are really excited about this, but I know you were at practice. You snuck over the fence or got a peek of them doing like a two-point conversion play. But uh, are you a, a football fan? I know if you're standing in the student section, you're probably blocking some people's view. Uh, but uh, what do you make of the football team this year? And I'll tell you what, man, I'm going to show some clips while we're talking from practice today. They were uh, Taylor was throwing some dimes out there today at practice, man. Yeah, uh, I am a football fan. I do enjoy going to the games and just supporting other fellow student athletes. I think that's something that is very important to me is just so, showing support to the other guys that are putting in the work and going through some of the same things that I'm going through with stresses and things like that. And I think this team could be really special. You know, you see the connection with Taylor and Eric. You know, Eric's very, very good at, at, out of the receiver spot and got two good running backs in Janty and Olani. And Taylor at the helm. I mean, you got a really, really good team there. Um, so not more receivers in there with Billy Bowens and Static and all those guys. And you got a great defense behind them. So this was uh, the think- catch of the day today, though. You mentioned McAllister gets by his defender. We won't say who it was, but a nice catch there in the corner of the end zone. That could be a a fun connection. To what's your football background, man? You ever played growing up? Uh, I played flag up from kindergarten to sixth grade. Played tackle seventh and eighth, and I broke my finger in eighth grade, and that was it. Okay. You did talk to Taylor, and one of the questions was about the uh, the uh, the plays getting called in in the wristband. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's uh, I just remember from I wouldn't play quarterback. I played receiver in uh, middle school, but I remember our quarterback just had like the play thing on his wrist, and the yep. coach would just tell him a number, and the play would be on there, and we, away we'd go. We got a lot of people watching in. I mentioned Bill was watching from California. We got Lisa watching from Woodburn, Oregon. How you doing, Lisa? Logan uh, watching from Nampa, also watching the M's trying to beat KC. I'm sure you're enjoying that one from Logan. Um, I'm, try- I'm hoping to see the Mariners get on a roll again. You know, they had a little tough stretch there, but the Orioles are good, and I let that one yesterday against the Royals slip away. Wholesome is uh, watching from Boise. Can't wait to watch TG and Deggy ball out this season. Uh, Hello from Kentucky, Voice for Elite. We appreciate you watching in Kentucky. Miles McKenna is watching in Utah. We got uh, Ashley Jones watching in Boise. Uh, JR is watching in Boise as well. Uh, Roy is watching in Walla Walla, Washington. Should be a great show. Looking forward to it. Two great athletes sitting down for what promises to be a great conversation. We appreciate you, Roy. Uh, for catching it. Uh, Tim Beck, by the way, wants to win the gift card. And how about this? He says if he wins, he'll invite you and me, and he'll pay for the rounds. Uh, I got news for you, Tim. Neither me or Tyson have to pay when we go play at Timberstone. So you would actually uh, – you, you'd be uh, playing for free. But uh, I, I, I guess till pre- you might have a little time to sneak in another round or two, right, Tyson? You got school starting Monday. Uh, you got any time left to get a round or two in if uh, Tim wins? Uh, I think I have some uh, some time, but – uh, once that like late September rolls around, that's when the schedule gets a little bit busier. Yeah. Uh, someone by the name of Sam Winter uh, checks in, watching from uh, Washington. Montesano, I love Montesano. Shout out Sam. There you go, Sam. Logan reminding, uh, mentioning the four home runs in one inning. By the way, uh, we have surpassed a, a new record. By the way, we are in triple digits now. Tyson, over 100 people watching. Uh, on the YouTube channel, on the various streams, and uh, that is uh, for your five shows here. We are at a, a record, uh, by the way. So, uh, again, uh, whole, uh, congratulations to you. This show has continued to take off. We appreciate everybody that's found the channel. We're now over 3,000 subscribers on the YouTube channel, and we're continuing to grow, and we appreciate all of you guys that has found us, whether it was for the uh, Mike Sanford, John Mallory show last night, whether it was me and Jay Tuss this morning, You got the Tyson Dagenhart show. We got uh, Jordan K starting his own show coming up on Wednesday nights, which we haven't even announced yet. So there you go. There's the uh, the first thing. But um, no, it's going to be we're we're having a lot of fun. Bronco Nation News continues to uh, take big steps forward, and it's going to be an awesome football and basketball season. And uh, we cannot do this show, which, by the way, I mean, you're we talked about it when we started, Tyson. But uh, I mean, this is history here. You're one of the few players in the country uh, doing an you know hosting his own show on an NIL deal and. It obviously is a possible thanks to Idaho Central Credit Union. So shout out ICCU. We appreciate them. ICCU.com. You can get more information, find a branch near you. Could not do this show without Idaho Central Credit Union. So when you're looking to start a new bank for all your banking needs, check out ICCU.com. They're the official bank of Bronco Nation News and the Reigns family. We cannot be happier. The mobile e-branch online banking could not be easier. was moving some money around today. Deposited a check right from my phone. It's so easy. Idaho Central Credit Union. We appreciate uh, everybody over there. Uh, 
Clark and Shelby and everybody just do a tremendous job. We're very thankful for, for their support of this show and for uh, getting it locked down with Tyson to do a deal over at ICCU because uh, this it's pretty cool that we're able to literally have, uh, you know, one of the star basketball players and the star quarterback. Uh, you know, you might uh, fight this, but arguably the two biggest faces in, in Boise State Athletics and maybe even just Boise State in general sitting down to talk for almost 30 minutes in a one-on-one interview, which you're going to hear very shortly uh, it's pretty darn cool, and I know uh, you're very appreciative of ICCU as well. Absolutely. I actually uh, started a savings account there, the high-yield one. It's it's very easy. You can start it from your own computer. So uh, really thankful for ICCU to allow me to have this show and do other things out in the community. And then Hold on, also- Kurt. Kurt, the show is not taped. I'm calling you out, man. We're live. We're live right now. We're live right now, Kurt. This show is not taped. The interview with Taylor Green is taped. There you go. It's 8-11. It's 8-11. Oh, who texted you? Who texted you? Oh, we can't see that. Oh, it, it's, uh, uh, it's just like on Twitter. Okay. There you go. But, X now. The, the interview is taped with Taylor Green that we're going to play here shortly because we had to tape that when he was able to yesterday. Uh, but the show is live. But I'm sorry. I cut you off. You started a savings account at ICCU. Oh, yeah. I started it uh, a couple days ago back when I was in Spokane. And it's just nice to be able to have a – credit union that uh, allows me to you know have money in both Spokane and Boise so very thankful for them very thankful for Shelby Wes and uh, Clark out there to help support the deal and excited to keep this thing rolling Kevin checking in from Idaho Falls we got uh, Rusty watching from Council Idaho um, let's see um, we got all kinds of folks again give us a shout out let us know where you're watching from we would love to uh, get it on there folks are talking about your handicap what's your what's your handicap right now uh if officially it's a 12.7 okay i'm not that good i'm probably closer to a 20 right now i'm really struggling i'm shooting in the low 90s pretty much mid 90s when i play i'm not doing great uh nathan not not uh, not afraid to admit that he shot a 120 on sunday uh nathan I, I need to play with you man you might make me feel a lot better about my game uh but uh Chase wanting to know when the basketball schedule will be released. Uh, I think the Mountain West schedule actually should be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Uh, we're, we're waiting on that, and I'll be curious to see which place you know you don't travel to and who you only host one time. But most of the non-conference games are set, and I don't know if it's since we had a show or not, but uh, you get a chance to go back home again. That's going to be cool. Yeah, I'm very excited. I know uh, when we were up there my freshman year, my mom hosted team dinner, and I was a it was a hit and then we're going to do it again. So we're really excited for that. And I'm excited to be home for Christmas. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, you get to just, you're the one guy who just gets to stay there after the game. That's uh, pretty cool. I know for you and Najee Smith last year, that was pretty cool. I remember we had the clip. I might have, maybe I should find it and put it in the, uh, the intro that I'm going to update for next week. But when they uh, announced you as the starter, you turned around and we're pumping oh, up yeah. all, the, all the crowd. You had all your fan, your family and stuff right there behind you. So that was, uh, that was pretty cool. Uh, I want to play the interview. We were going to talk about the uh, Canadian trip. Should we do the Canadian trip after the interview, or should we uh, talk Canadian trip and, and then do the interview? Let's let's give a quick 30 seconds uh, to the fans. Uh, do you want to see some highlights? Do you want to talk Canadian trip and then play the interview, or do you want to go straight to the interview with Taylor Green? We have record viewership. I kind of say make them wait a few more minutes, to be honest with you, and talk we about might as well. you got to make them wait. I, I think we are, actually. Let's talk about the Canadian trip for a few minutes. We've got highlights from the games. Should we start with RJ Keen's dunk? You have to. That was the highlight of the trip, I think. We got to, we're going to keep uh, – Wholesome says make us wait. So I, that was the first response. So we're going to make us wait a few more minutes. But, by the way, we can add – we should get a map and see how many states we can check off during each show. Uh, James is watching from North Dakota. And then uh, Kalen checks in from uh, South Dakota. So both Dakotas now represented as well. I think we're up to nine or ten states. Uh, Nathan uh, commenting on Kane or uh, Keen. Um, but, uh, RJ Keen, we'll start with the dunk, man. Now I got to give you credit. I, I joked about this to Keen. I joked about this with you, but, uh, the dunk that RJ Keen had would not have been possible without Tyson Degenhardt. You, you are the sole reason for that dunk. Uh, I guess that's partially true. Uh, I did miss the, the floater towards the end of the first half, but, uh, Keen came and cleaned it up and had an incredible dunk. And, uh, it was great. I, I cut him off there at the beginning. Oh, that was the wrong clip. Where's the uh, dunk here? Here we go. Let's go back and play it. We were uh, watching it so many times. Oh, 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 oh. pretty amped up after that, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. That's that's always a play, especially going into the half. That's a momentum swing, like. 
you have that in any game that always you know helps the team morale even if it's a slow start or something i know we were on like we get up like a 9-0 run to to them right right like towards the end of the uh, second half and then yeah. this and bang and that's a huge momentum shift for us and we go into the locker room a little bit uh better that was the uh in the third game let's go back to the first game for a few minutes first uh, for a couple seconds uh, you guys got the uh, the first game. You had the Canadian National Anthem playing. Kind of cool uh, to be out there. And then, obviously, uh, Andrew Meadow. Here's uh, Omar Stanley with the nice dunk to start with. But this was the 31-point uh, game for Andrew Meadow. Also, you had uh, Cam Martin, I believe, with 21 points. Uh, both those guys were big in this game. Oh, absolutely. It was uh, great to see uh, Cam and RJ kind of get their sea legs out from under them for not playing for two years. And then uh, Andrew just – you know, proved that all of his work he did in the summer paid off. And uh, I know he's a tremendous worker, probably one of the hardest workers I've ever seen. And uh, he's just going to continue to do it. And he's going to be a huge weapon for us this season. What about Cam Martin? Man, we saw him hit the three there. Uh, he had a couple nice drives in this game as well. Uh, there you are, of course. We had to put your bucket in there. But uh, uh, Cam Martin, man, I was impressed. The dude could uh, hit the three. Here he is with the pump fake and then the drive and the dunk here going baseline. Uh, I thought he's going to, he obviously showed he's going to help you guys too. Absolutely. I think he has one of the best pump fakes I think I've seen. You know, it gets a lot of us at practice. He's just so realistic. And with the threat of his uh, three point ability, you have to you have to, you know, try to contest at least somewhat. And um, the way he attacks, the way he passes, it's just a great fit for our team. And we'll really be able to space the floor. And here's Andrew Meadow. Nice move here. And that was like probably his fourth best move of the game right there where he uh, kind of gets some, creates some hesitation there. Uh, this didn't count, but I thought it was a nice dunk by uh, Omar Stanley right Oof. before the uh, shot clock went off. Uh, but uh, what would you make of the international rules? And just the uh, – the, by the way, here's a nice uh, three-pointer in the corner from Keen. I thought he played well. But uh, the international rules, man, the shorter shot clock, some of the differences, what would you think? Uh, it sped the game up a lot, you know, uh, only with 24 seconds on offense you couldn't really stall. You had to get to your offense quick, and if something didn't work, you had to go into your last 10-second offense really quickly. And on defense, you didn't have to guard for as long, but you guarded more possessions. And so that's why you see some of the higher scores. Like normally in a college game, we're not going to score 134 points because yeah. there's not that many possessions in a game. Um, but we did shoot the ball really well, and um, just a, it's a little different, but it's basically the same game. 21 three-pointers I think you made in that game. And, and I know you guys were – you know, you obviously overmatched them. But, hey, man, even if they leave you open, you still got to hit the shot, right? Yeah, we – in practice, we've been uh, making a lot of open shots. And so, uh, you know, if we get those open looks, I trust my teammates that they're going to knock them down. Another nice uh, bucket there down low from uh, Omar Stanley. But uh, Andrew Meadowman in the second half, that was fun to watch. Oh, that was incredible. You just see a guy hit – get that hot you just want to keep feeding them the ball and watch the ball go through the hoop each and every possession makes the game a lot easier cam martin again with the uh, step back three uh but uh, the play of the uh, of the day coming up uh, here in a minute uh, again max rice uh, gets going it, it seemed like you and max and, and buzo you kind of did your thing but you didn't you knew you didn't really need to like be super aggressive the third game you obviously uh stepped up but uh it was nice i think everybody kind of you kind of know what you do but to see what these other guys could do and step up uh, this was kind of the uh, play of the game coming up here. Nice play there by Keen, But uh, Meadow scores coming up right here in a nice, tough bucket in transition. But then you have some hustle. Keen helps deflect the ball and get the steal. And then freshman to freshman. How about the alley-oop here? That's a, that's a great freshman duo that we're going to have here for a long time. Uh, they're both two tremendous workers and two tremendous players. And I'm just really happy that they're on our team and not on someone else's. No doubt about it. Uh, we got some comments saying uh, BSU basketball this year stoked. Uh, Lisa asking about a preseason scrimmage. Not sure about that, but it'd uh, be great if they had a dunk contest. Uh, you guys have done that in the past over in gym two. I don't remember if you were part of any of those or not over in the Bronco gym uh, right before a football game. They've done some things in the afternoon before, maybe before an evening football game. So maybe they'll see if they can do something like that. We got uh, Colin checking in from Carson City, Nevada. So that's another city or another state I think we can knock off the list. I don't know if we had a Nevada yet. So, again, let us know where you're watching from. And, again, one-on-one -on -one exclusive interview coming up with uh, Tyson Degenhardt and Taylor Green uh, here momentarily. We just uh, – you know, we're going to get the sponsors their love, get our talk, get the viewership as high as we can before we play the interview here. So we're not we're we're not, we're not afraid to, uh, you know, folks told us to wait. We're going to keep the as wholesome says, keep the anticipation rolling. So we will get to the interview here shortly. Uh, but uh, a couple other highlights. This is game, this is game two. 
much smaller gym, much uh, much different uh, scenario in this one. Um, the smaller gym, you guys had a long drive to get there. Uh, what, what do you remember about the second game? Uh, you know, we had some uh, defensive lapses in the first game, and we really just wanted to come out and, you know, fix those. Um, we had too, just too many – mental errors on our end on the defensive end that we thought we could clean up, especially in transition defense. And I think we did a really good job of improving those and just playing hard. And we had a really solid group in that game. And we got to see Omar and Cam really show uh, what they can do for us. Uh, Omar had like 20 Omar had the, 15. And, yeah, 15 uh, rebounds, I think. Pretty impressive. He just has a knack for finding the ball. And he's just so athletic, long arms, just is able to tip the ball to himself. And it's a huge weapon for us to have. Jace Whiting, here's Max Rice hitting a three. But Jace Whiting, I thought, uh, showed some things in all three games. But he had the second game, had a couple nice uh, baskets here. I mean, uh, everybody just kind of expects, you know, Roddy Anderson to come in and be the starting point guard and play all these minutes, man. But uh, I think Jace Whiting is going to have something to say about that, man. He, he looks like he's really improved. He has. He's, he's uh, done a lot of work in the weight room, and you can just tell he's he's a grinder and always likes to be in the gym and uh, – you know, it's it's fun to watch them compete in practice because they both push each other to the limit, and that's that's what practice is all about. Uh, you know, iron sharpens iron. And I see that with those two. Uh, Tequila Gus says, honestly, wasn't that interested in basketball till BNN started up. Definitely stoked my interest with all the access and community. Well, I'll take some credit for that then. Thank you, uh, Tequila Gus. We got to get you uh, out to some games and things. But uh, have you? What has it been like for you, Tyson, the last couple of years, uh, continuing to see the the interest in the program grow? It, it's awesome. You know, growing up in Spokane, you see the the Zags and how their games are always sold out. And I know it's a smaller arena, but, uh, you know, it's something that is very important to me is to get everyone out to the game and just see the whole city kind of rally behind us. has just been incredible. And we're hoping to keep that winning winning uh, program and keep it going. So game three, you kind of took over. We'll switch to uh, game three now. Uh, what was that like for you? Game three, uh, my favorite gym, by the way. Love the gym. Thought it had more of the international feel. Uh, but uh, you had a huge game in this one. Um, were you just Did the game just kind of come to you? Were you trying to be more aggressive in this one? Did you have 29 points, I think, or something like that? Uh, maybe 30, 31, something like that. What, what uh, were you just uh, – it just came to you. Did you have, did you want to finish the tournament strong, or what was the reason for the big scoring output? Uh, it was twenty nine because coach pulled me out and he's like, "I'm not letting you go back in because I'm not going to let you get thirty, so you can get it during the season." So okay, um, uh, it was just one of those games where you see the first shot go in. That was the first three, and you know when you make the first shot, your confidence goes up a million. And um, my teammates were finding me, and it was just just a good game all around. It was a great environment. They had a little student section on the far side of the of the video, and they were getting into it. It was a great crowd, and uh, we ended the the week in Canada very strongly. So it was a great great week for us. Yeah, apparently the in the international rules, there's nothing against noisemakers because they, if you can see down there, they all had those uh, buckets that they were banging on, and uh, they were making some noise. They were playing in the uh, halftime game. And they were uh, down there at the end making some noise. They were eating free food and making some. I mean, you guys, uh, they, they went on a little bit of a run, too. I mean, you guys were down like 12-11 or something. Look at that crowd. I mean, it was a almost sold-out crowd. I mean, that was uh, – there, there were games last year where you didn't have that many fans. And maybe in the tournament, in the uh, uh, preseason tournament in uh, over there in uh, North Carolina, wherever it was, South Carolina, uh, Charleston, and then uh, or Myrtle Beach, whatever the tournament was last year. And then uh, maybe San Jose. I mean, look at that crowd, man. Like, that was a legit road game. And oh, most definitely. And uh, when they went on their run, the gym got pretty loud, uh, all things considered, for a summer game. And uh, it was great. It gave us kind of a real game atmosphere, especially in August. We'll take you know, all the experience that we can get. And here's the highlight of the, the trip right there. there you go. By the way, thanks to Wholesome, who just donated a dollar and ninety nine cents on the YouTube channel. I don't know if we're technically legally allowed to give that to uh, Tyson or not, but uh, uh, either way, Wholesome, we appreciate that, and uh, that's very kind of you, man, for uh, for uh, helping support BNN and what we're doing here. And I know our sponsors uh, thank it, and everybody uh, thanks you as well for your support, but not necessary at all. But uh, another step back three from Cam Martin, man. We're going to see a lot of that this year, aren't we? Absolutely. He he can shoot it really well and. His IQ, he just finds the right spot to get open, and uh, he's going to make a lot of them this year. Well, you know, you're going to make a lot of them this year, too. We see the extra pass there. I was sitting next to Larry Eustacey, man, during the games, and by the way, that's an unbelievable treat that for free I get to sit next to Larry. You actually get paid to sit there next to Larry Eustacey. He had some amazing comments, but he really mentioned the ball movement, man, and, like, you know, we saw it right there. Where and Right there is another great pass, but, I mean, just the unselfishness you guys seem to have. The ball's not sticking 
Um, you know, Max could have taken that three, but instead passed it over to you in the corner for an even more open three. Uh, anything? I mean, did that stand out to you at all? The ball movement on this trip? Uh, yeah, we, we really moved the ball. Well, I think we had like 26 assists in the first game and our goal is always, uh, to get, I think we get, try to get 20 assists, you know, in, in some games, you know, I think our goal overall is 12 and a half. So 24, I think we really showed that we can move the ball and that no, no one of us has an ego to go get 20 points. We're just going to feed the hot hand and take the open shots and make the right play. Overall though. I mean, uh, to, to win the three games, I know that was kind of a given given the competition, but um, the team bonding, we're going to show a little clip here in a minute of the whitewater rafting, but uh, all the stuff you guys got to do, the team meals, the walking around downtown in Vancouver. I mean, uh, overall, was it about as good as you guys could ask for for the three games? It was an A-plus in my book, you know, being able to just to go play games in July and August with such a new team is just a blessing to, you know, have a group come together and be able to play and, you know, start further ahead than any of the past two teams. So uh, it, was, it was awesome and uh, wouldn't trade it for the world. We won't play the whole video that I put together, but I have a little rafting video that I put together. Uh, what, uh, what, what stood out to you about the rafting and just that experience of uh, getting to do that with the team? Oh, it was very pretty. There was a lot of uh, great sights to see, the waterfall especially. And, um, it was fun just to bond with the team. You know, in my raft, we had our new Dobo, Matt Charles. It was great just to talk to him for, you know, the whole trip and get to know him a little bit better. And um, it was just fun. We had some some splashing wars throughout the throughout the trip when we got by some teammates. But uh, it was a great little trip. And I would say it was like the perfect amount of rapids. I would agree. Yeah, it wasn't like – too many rapids but it wasn't like none and uh it was calm enough for everyone to there was a little trash play. talking here hold on i gotta play this clip here this is a little trash talking between now we had we had uh, in our raft we had uh uh birdo and he was talking to larry stacy and leon and david Motes and the wife here uh leon's wife as they kind of by. we need to put some temptations on larry's uh playlist he a little off rhythm his rhythm's a little lacking. I can't see you. We're passing you. What we, you we, we, need some, we need to put some Commodores on his playlist. I can't, I can't hear you. What's that? See us. We had uh, Cody Gobbler. We had uh, the new trainer. We had uh, Birdo. Long path here. We'll, we'll wait. Nate Lowry was in ours as well. Uh, it was a, it, you're right, man. When you're kind of in the raft just going, you had time to catch and chat with everybody and talk. And it was uh, – Birdo was a little nervous at first, uh, but he ended up doing all right. He said he feels more comfortable on the basketball court than he does in the in the water. But uh, there was it was uh, it was definitely harder than the Boise River. I mean, obviously, um, oh, yeah. but I, I never like felt for my life. But there were some times, man, where it was uh, you had to hold on, and there were some there were some uh, things, and even like Max teams fell out. One of your your GA fell out of his raft, right? I mean, there were some, I mean it, you had to. There were times where you had to be holding on a little bit. Oh yeah. Um... Max did fall out, unfortunately, but we got him back on the raft pretty quickly afterwards. Um, I Talk see a whole scene asking, here, like, the, uh, waterfall. Oh yeah, this is the waterfall. Um, it was very, very cool. It's, it was the water was very, very cold. Um, I don't know why, but it was just very cold. But it was very, very pretty to see the waterfall naturally flowing. Pretty good pressure though, right? It was getting you pretty hard. Oh yeah, and it was cold, so that didn't help either. Guys got the uh, the team picture there. Uh, but then you got uh, it's a once in a lifetime for these guys. A lot of these guys have never done it. Bald eagles, waterfalls, nature. Go Broncos. We're loving it. He's got the, uh, the mud there. I didn't understand what that was. Did you ever get an explanation why they put like the mud, like eye black kind of on our – was it some sort of spiritual thing or something? I don't know. Honestly, I have no idea. Okay. I just went with the flow there. Uh, any class three? I'm not sure what the class what – the, what they were on the rapids. Do we know – I don't, I don't think – it might not have been class three. I, I don't you, know you look at look at your uh, you got some good paddling going on there. Yeah, it was a good. We had a good raft. Uh, shout out to Stu, our guide. He was great. Uh, he showed us a lot around and we had a lot of fun with him. Yeah, it was a beautiful day. What what does that kind of stuff do, man? To get these extra time, the extra road trip, the extra bus rides, the extra time in the hotel, the rafts. I mean, in terms of the uh, the team bonding, man, going into next season to have that head start when you come back in the fall time. here. What uh, what does that do, man, to help you guys? No, oh, it's huge. It's a it's a jump start on our season, and to have three games under our belt and in August is a huge. So we can get like guys like Cam and Keen some some game minutes since they haven't played in two years, and get to see the freshmen play and get to try some different lineups to see what will work during the season. So it's a huge advantage for us, and we're thankful it happened this year. 
All right. Well, I think we've made folks wait uh, long enough. It's been uh, it, the Canada trip was awesome. I want to give it one more shout out personally to uh, Coach Rice, to Cody Gogler, to everybody, uh, yourself included, Tyson. The the uh, the players, uh, you know, they, they may rip on me behind my back. Who knows? But you guys at least uh, are always very uh, friendly, very kind, welcoming. Uh, you make it uh, fun to want to hang around. And, uh, you know, I, I'm about twice your guys' age almost. So uh, the fact that uh, you guys are welcoming and nice and, and uh, you know, uh, the, the times that you guys let me tag along for, for a meal or uh, get hitched a bus ride a couple times, uh, always appreciate. Um, there was one time you guys, I think it was the third game, you guys were waiting on waiting on me to leave. But that was your <laughs> That was kind of your fault for taking uh, too long talking to your family to get back over for the interview. That definitely uh, was my fault. And then I, you hung me out to dry because, yeah, you're already on the bus, and then in there everyone's waiting for me. But uh, I, I do appreciate it. You guys are always uh, – you make it uh, you know not weird or uh, shy or anything. So you make it fun to, to come around, and I think that's reflective in the coverage. And uh, it's been a lot of fun getting to know you guys, and I think it's going to be a really, really fun season uh, for, for you guys and um, for, uh, for Bronco Nation as well, I think. So um, – uh, excited uh, for the Canada trip and excited to see what happens. You guys start school on Monday, is that correct? That's correct. Yep. And then when do the workouts and things get going? Um, we haven't gotten our schedule yet, so we're not sure. Um, I'm sure it's going to start probably during that week, but I'm not 100 percent sure. All right, we got to thank the sponsors here, and then we will get to the interview with Talon Green. Uh, Talon Green, by the way, uh, also uh, similar in you. You both have uh, deals with Lean Feast, so uh, tell our friends about Lean Feast, man. And again, I know they're now feeding. The football team once a week. They're feeding the basketball team. You and Taylor and Ashton, um, you guys have figured it out. Hopefully other people will too soon. Yeah, uh, Lean Feast has been great to me. It's really helped me dial in my nutrition. With And in your meal, you get a protein, you get a carb, you get a veggie, and all their food is freshly made. They put it in a little, little container. You bring it home. You put it in the microwave for two minutes, and then it's ready to go. And for people who don't have a lot of time to cook, this is the best option for you. Great food, very easy to make. I highly recommend to any person to go to Lean Feast, try them out. Uh, yeah, I just love the uh, the uh, variety of it. You know, it's not frozen. It's all you know, prepared fresh, right there on the spot. You can pick what you want. You can pick. You know, if you're hungrier today, maybe you get six or eight ounces instead of four. Or if you want to go, uh, you know, you can choose the carb, the veggie. You know, I'm doing the keto uh, lifestyle right now, so you can go for you know the the cauliflower rice or. Uh, you can mix things up. There's a lot of options. So, again, leanfeast.com slash Meridian. It's on uh, Eagle Road there near Ustick uh, in Meridian, and uh, you can, which is really close to the uh, BNN headquarters, by the way, which is one of the reasons that I love it. But you can also go online and have it delivered, uh, leanfeast.com slash Meridian. Make sure you uh, check them out. I also mentioned Idaho Central Credit Union. We've got a couple more basketballs left, by the way, Tyson. We can figure out a way to give those away. Uh, a signed ball by Tyson Degenhart uh, if you want to uh, – a ball by Tyson Degenhardt signed. Well, we've got like three left. Maybe we can go ahead and say if you sign up for a, a subscription tonight, we can throw that in as well. Uh, sign up for a Bronco Nation News subscription, 70 bucks, one-time fee. And uh, if you do that during the Tail and Green interview or tonight before midnight, uh, we will uh, throw in a uh, signed Tyson Degenhardt ball. We've got three of those left uh, along with the uh, $20 gift card to Taco Bell. Or if you'd rather play some golf, we'll throw in the Timberstone round as well. So big thanks, ICCU, ICCU.com. There's a branch pretty much on every corner, but uh, we are super appreciative of Idaho Central Credit Union. And, uh, again, uh, I, I we use them for BNN, man. It's so easy to move money around. And uh, what they did to uh, step up, uh, and, you know, I know you don't want to talk finances and stuff, but it was a significant investment to get you on board with this. They are, you know, backing up their uh, talk about, you know, supporting the local community, supporting the athletes. And, um, you know, they they uh, they they uh, are helping you out, which in turn is helping out the local community. And so uh, big shout out and thanks to ICCU. They you see them on, you know, with the high school uh, scoreboards and things. You see them doing all the different arenas in the state. And uh, now they're entering the NIL game, and they picked the perfect, you know, guy to start with there with uh, you, Tyson. So uh, Roy wants an autographed ball. Well, are you a subscriber? Subscribe, and we'll uh, hook it. We'll uh, we'll hook you up. Uh, Rudy says he has a signed golf ball, by the way, from the uh, tournament. Uh, you were signing balls uh, before you were dropping it right there, uh, pin high on the green, right? Uh, maybe one or two that were pin high, but uh, <laughs> I did fine on the tee shot. It's, it's pretty nerve wracking. That was a lot of fun. Looking forward to uh, doing that again next year. So uh, any final words on the interview before we uh, before we play it here? Wholesome is shouting out ICCU. Uh, 
uh, thanking them, a great local business. I agree. Again, thank you, ICCU. But uh, Taylor Green, man, uh, you, you came over to the football facility, you had a chance to sit down with them. Uh, did, did you enjoy the interview? Any final words before we play it? Oh, it was great. It's always great talking to Taylor. Uh, to have a guy at QB as humble as he is, is is great for a team and shows a lot of leadership qualities that I envy. And so uh, really excited for you guys to see this interview. And I had a great time talking to him yesterday. Without further ado, we have record viewership. We appreciate all of you for hanging on. Here he is. This is, And again, I hope we, we can't stress how rare this is. I don't know if any other school in the country has the star quarterback and the star basketball player sitting down, chatting for a one-on-one -on -one chat uh, in the middle of fall camp like this. Uh, very appreciative. Patrick Walsh, Mike Walsh, uh, Andy Avalos, you know, Taylor Green, everybody over at Boise State, Lou Major for allowing this to happen. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, obviously, uh, Tyson, thank you for going over there and making it work to do the interview. But uh, here it is. Without further ado, history in the making, the two faces of Boise State Athletics sitting down for a one-on-one -on -one chat here on Bronco Nation News. Very anticipated guest, probably one of the biggest names in the Boise State community. We got quarterback Taylor Green on the show. Thank you for being on. Well, it's good, man. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely. So uh, we see you out at fall camp right now. Uh, what's your like typical day look like you know start to finish um i would say wake up probably like 5 30 uh get to facility probably like 5 45 you know i'm a quick get my clothes on then start driving you know brush the teeth all of that uh we have meetings quarterback has meetings about like either 6 30 or 6 45 depending on the day depending on the install um eat breakfast in between there um uh, then we have activation, then we have practice, then we get off about 11.30 to noon. Then we have about two hour break. Then we have meetings till about 7.30. Then we have walkthrough and then we get out about 8, 8.30. So that's a long day. Yeah, that's like, a long day. How do you like, you know, it's a long, fall camp how do you mentally get through each and every one of those days yeah i'll say i learned definitely um get all the football like stuff done at the facility you know the film the extra work in the uh on the field and just you know eating and all that do that here you know when you're at home just you know chill you know yeah. don't i learned like don't do football stuff when you're at home just chill like take your mind off and just reset like reset your mind so that's what i've been that's what i've been doing and trying to keep consistent with that i think that's important like me personally i try to get all my basketball stuff done yep. and then when i go home i'm a different person. I'm, yep. I'm tyson the person yep. not tyson the basketball exactly. player and i think that's important just to be able to separate the two in a way because we do have a lot of pressure on ourselves and um you know there's a lot you know, they expect a lot out of us exactly. out on the court in the yep. field. And so being able to enjoy the other parts of life when you can, just being with your roommates and just being hanging with the guys is Hell super yeah. important. Yep. Mm -hmm. So how, how's fall camp going? Like I, I saw you guys were out there. Uh, you, you got pretty hyped on like a two point conversion. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's definitely going. It's definitely going good. You know, having fun out there, you know, playing football, uh, you know, get the pads on. Uh, better than uh, you know, summer. You know, just the conditioning, all that. It's not really, it's it's not really fun. But you know, you got to do it. It's, we call it, you know, it's good work and you know, all work. And you know, it's gonna be, it's gonna be some pain in there. But you know, running the decks, you know, um, but like being with my team is always fun. And just being out there on the blue or you know, uh, on the grass and just trying to bring that energy because you know it's a long practice. You know, got the pads on. It's it's summer, so it's a little hot. So just trying to trying to bring that energy and just trying to be consistent and trying to get better each and every day. How bad are the decks? I got to gotta ask you because we had Ooh. Coach Avalos come and talk Ooh. to us a little bit in the summer, and he said you guys do decks on Fridays and you do like 18 to 20 of them. Yes, it is hard. If you ask anybody else, they'll say like, Taylor, you're like tall, so like it's easier. No, no, <laughs> no, it's still, it's still, it's still painful. You like after about, 10 to 11 you start like losing feeling in your legs and your legs start like we get ready and your legs are like shaking like this and like people don't know like we have leg day before it so we squat power clean do all that before and then we have to run the decks and the sun's out and so it's just sweating just on halfway we say we say like 
take the tarps off. So, like, we take our shirts off and everybody takes the shirts off and we start yelling. And, you know, that's the halfway point. We call it, like, halftime. And we just trying to just attack it because, you know, it's, it's going to be painful. It's going – you're going to hurt. So, you might as well – you might as well just attack it. And I think for people who don't know, like, when you guys run decks, you don't run up the stairs. Nah, you run, we up don't, the, run up the actual bleachers, which bleachers. are a lot harder, yes. you know. And I think people don't realize that when they talk about decks. Yes, we definitely run the bleachers. You got to – you just gotta run up it like the steps. You just gotta do that, but you definitely. Um, I don't, I don't miss that right now. <laughs> I don't. Coach Avalos invited the team, to, uh, my team, to do it. We might have to come out next summer and do come it. Come on, like a, got to, you got be, to be good team bonding it between will, the two. For and sure. Have a little, I know you guys like eat afterwards. Yeah, right? you you have a big meal. Come on. All right, we might have to make that let's, happen. Let's get it. So we, we kind of want to talk about uh, last season for you. You had the Oregon State game. It wasn't going as planned. Uh, what was it like? Who told you that you were going to start the second half? And, you know, where did your mind go to after that? Yeah, definitely. Um, like I was I had the uh, like the mic headphone thing for the signals. And uh, they said, like, tailing, like, you're in. And then, like, I'm not going to lie. Like, I was like, oh, OK, here we go. You know, the heart starting to pump, you know, got a little nerves and stuff. So, you know, uh, right before I went out, you know, I prayed and um just got a little ca- got a calmness in me and to like you know it's it's a game you know um uh, just go out and do you and just go out and um just just play for my brothers you know play play for you know the man above god you know and uh yeah just it was crazy crazy atmosphere crazy game um uh, i had my uh, high school running back he he was doing good too and i was like no oh, not on my defense but yeah. oh man <laughs> So, um, definitely, um, a re- uh, really good learning experience, you know, just trying to take, trying to take it one play at a time, you know, and just trying to focus in on what I have to do and the job I have to do each and every play, especially like being away, being at Oregon State with that uh, environment there. So just focus on what I have to do is yeah. what I learned. Do you guys have like the, Obviously, you probably have the – do you have the mic in that in your helmet? Nah, Not like the NFL? Uh, NFL, no. Nah, we have straight signals, straight signals. So, how, how do those signals work? Like, obviously, you have, like, three or four guys standing there, and mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure one person is one person that you're looking at or something like that. Yeah, so the signals is, is like, different for each, like, each program, you know, just each, each person has its own, like, job or role, so you got to go down the line. And just like each each play is something different. Sometimes you got to go back and forth because you get a signal, then you get on the field, then you're like, oh, what was that signal again? So um, just got to um, – like we're used to it now, but um, it definitely when, – when I first got here, it took a lot because in high school it was like three words and like that was the whole play. So definitely took a little bit just getting used to. But, um, I mean, the whole offense is clicking now and excited for that. So. Yeah, like uh, I remember in, when I was playing football, we had like the little wristband, the wristband yeah. and they have like 50 plays on it. And then our coach would be like two, yep. you read two, you go to the huddle. But it's definitely not like that. You see all the – do you ever have a time where in a game where you see the signals and you're like, I don't even know what play I'm supposed to run? Nah, because we just – we do so many, so many walkthroughs. You know, we definitely in a game, I would say we're probably the most highly prepared uh, team in the country because – like even when we like wake up in games, we wake up probably like if like our 10 a.m. games, we wake up probably like 4 a.m., 5 a.m. And just always just doing walkthroughs, just making sure everybody's on point. You know, I'm looking at the script before before uh, like our walkthroughs, even after our walkthroughs to make sure I know every single play. And I have to be like if I see one one signal or one part of a player I I should know and I need to know every like the whole thing just from that one thing that's how prepared that I need to be especially um leading this team absolutely uh so now we want to talk about like uh your when you found out you were actually going to start like yeah. that whole week after the UTEP game to walk us through that because I know like Twitter was going crazy about it knowing that Hank left coach Plow got fired um Coach Cutter kind of coming in and filling the offensive coordinator role. Mm-hmm. Just talk about that and what that week was like for you. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely was nervous uh, with that whole um, situation with uh, 
like you said, Hank leaving and Plow getting fired. But just going through practice, I had definitely had most amazing, definitely have the most amazing teammates. You know, they embraced me with full arms and, you know, with great encouragement, especially in practice. Like, like we believe in you, like we, you, know, you can do it, you know. So definitely um, props to them, you know, because they definitely helped a lot. My coaches helped a lot, simplified the game plan and like tailing just focus on this and that's all you need to focus on and just go play and um, my parents you know they helped a lot because I would tell them like I was a little nervous and um, just talking to them like you know just being yeah. away from home and you know your first your first game you was probably nervous and stuff yeah. so just having that person having that um, the family that you can just rely on is definitely definitely comforted me a lot. Yeah, because like when I found out I was starting against St. Louis, I was in class and Coach Barch texted me. It's like, hey, we got a meeting with Coach before practice, and I'm like, did I do something wrong? Yeah. Like, am I getting kicked <laughs> off the team? Like, didn't I didn't know because I, you know, my first thing goes to you know mm-hmm. worst situation possible. And we ha- had the meeting and Coach Coach Rice told me I was starting, and I was like, I didn't know what to say. Yeah. Like, I was just like, <laughs> all right, and I'm glad they did it the day before the game and so that I got a day of reps at the with the first team and yep. just getting used to that. And then the only person I told was my sister because I didn't want to tell my parents because they would have asked me a million questions. Yeah. <laughs> I would have gotten a million texts from my aunts, uncles, cousins, grandmas, yep. like everything. And so the only thing I told her is like, just make sure mom and dad are watching the game. And then I think my mom found out through Twitter. It's like, welcome to the uh, starting line of Mr. Dagenhart. And she probably just went texting <laughs> left and right, Facebook yeah. friends here and there and, uh, it worked out. We, had a, we did end up losing, but that first game, you just kind of get all the jitters yep, out. You do. You, you know, you start. You're obviously we're obviously in the same spot, like mm-hmm. coming in and not knowing what to do. Really, yep. you just kind of get tossed in the fire, and mm-hmm. you just try to make a play. Yep. And, and then now that you're starting, you can kind of get into a rhythm. And mm-hmm. and once as the season gone on, you've you found a rhythm pretty well, right? Yep. Thank you. Yeah, definitely for sure. You know, you are, like you already know you when you get thrown in the fire, you just got to play and you just learn from it you know just take every every single play and every single like even if you do bad just learn from it you know um definitely big believer in like making new mistakes you know don't make the same mistake learn from your mistake yeah absolutely like you know coach burns on our defensive end like if we make one mistake he'll get on you but if he gets on one person he expects the whole team to Mm -hmm. do it and i'm sure it's the same way with the football team making sure that everyone's on the same page and so we don't make that mistake in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, what was like one of those moments like last year where you're like, man, I, I'm really doing this, like playing good. I made a huge play. Like what was that one moment where like, man, this is awesome. Yeah. I would say, I would say Colorado state, Colorado state for sure. You know, just the way our offense was clicking and literally just bang, 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 just going, throwing, running, and just doing it all. Um, not even just me, just my teammates, you know, the defense and special teams, and we're just doing it as a team. And it's just the energy and just the sideline was was crazy. The sideline was amazing, you know, even at home, the, the crowd there, and just uh, especially in the all-orange uniforms. So uh, definitely – that definitely was fun and definitely um, definitely loved it. Yeah, that was a good game for you guys because I remember, cause was, you know, you loved it. was that before or after the BYU game? That was before. I think it was Because you guys got on a roll, like, yeah. the second half of the San Diego State game and you guys beat Fresno and then, I'm not sure in between, but then you guys had Colorado State and you just looked like everything clicked. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, you go through the week, you're like, if this happens and we just, you know, if this thing goes well, then this and – just seemed like everything was like a snowball effect mm-hmm. and just everything goes well. And those are the best kind of games. Yes, for sure. It takes a lot of the pressure off you. You just get to play free and knowing that, ev- you know, everyone's going to be in the right spot. Yep. And, yeah. Because we had a game, I think it was two games after I started. It was a third game. We played at Cal State Northridge and just seemed like everything clicked. Our whole offense was working. Our defense was really good. We didn't shut down their shooter. And then uh, in the game, Sam Winter got his first bucket. So okay. That, okay. Was, that was a shout out to Sam. That yeah, was shout a, out to Sam. <laughs> yeah, that was a big moment for us. And just the whole bench. Talk, you're talking about the bench. Like, our bench was yep. going nuts. You see, like, we have a video of it. Sam, 
in the bucket and he just flashes to the bench and see E-Man, Malad, and everyone yep. going nuts. And it was just a really cool moment to see that mm-hmm. kind of come together. And then the rest of the season kind of worked out the way it did. Um, talk about that bowl game experience because I know like you and Ashton had a really really good game like just talk about how everything kind of came together especially yeah. after losing the Mountain West Championship yeah for sure um, you know definitely losing the Mount- Mountain West Championship uh, left a bad taste in our mouth and we wanted to go out with a bang and you know our coaches said I mean you can either feel bad for yourself or you can respond to it and um, like what are you going to do that's your two choices and um, you know being being from Texas, being from Dallas, shout out Louisville, uh, being close to home, uh, I was like, man, I'm about to go out with a bang. And just um, a lot of people from Texas, uh, it was amazing. Just had my uh, a lot of my family there, uh, a lot of my old, uh, high school teammates there. And, um, you know, Ashton had his fam, Zion, uh, Trell, Static, just all of us from – uh, all are from uh, from the Dallas area. Area, Eric, shout out Eric. Um, just being out there, it was surprisingly cold. Though. I was like, our whole team was like, man, I thought Texas was hot. I was like, it gets cold in Texas. It's just not that. It's not that consistent, but mm-hmm. it definitely gets cold. So um, it was amazing um, just being just being out there um, and just the ability to just be with my fam after the game and just celebrating with them. And I was telling, telling, um, I forgot who I was telling. I think it was, I think it was Ashton. I was telling Ashton, I didn't even get a picture with the trophy because I was celebrating with my family and just sharing that moment with them was definitely amazing. Just having, you know, pictures and my grandparents was there and just um, being able to celebrate with them was definitely, I would never forget that. Oh yeah. Like uh, we played a game in Spokane my freshman year and, um, two minutes left, I hit a three to kind of steal the deal and having my whole family like behind the bench and I had probably 50, close to 50 friends and family just right behind the bench and just having them there after the game, just taking pictures, just being with them. It's just yeah. the coolest thing ever. Because in high school, you have everyone there because everyone lives mm-hmm. kind of around you. But now that everyone kind of goes their own way and coming back and having a game near you is just super cool. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So now that you have like almost a full year of like starting under your belt, like how are you, what's your, like, how are you going to improve from last year and just build off of it and continue to be the, a great player that you are? Yeah, I'll say um, just taking that leadership role and, you know, just taking command of this offense um, and just being the most prepared person, like I said, on the field and, you know, just build on what I did last year, you know, not trying to overthink, just trying to just play and just communicate with my teammates because, you know, it's a team sport and just, you know, we have the probably one of the toughest schedules this year, but the way we're, the way we're practicing, the way we're grinding, the way we, we did in the summer is just, it's just really special. You know, we can feel that energy and just trying to take that. And well, what I built on from last year, like I said, and just growing that. And, um, you know, my coach Bush is shout out Bush. And he's definitely on me tough. Um, just doing the good, like doing the good things I did, but putting my weaknesses into strengths and, um, you know, just trying to stay consistent in that and just be really, really intentional in that. And, you know, at the same time, just having the balance of having fun, you know, cause you know, I'm always dancing, always, oh, yeah. <laughs> always having fun, but always, but I have a job to do and I have a role to, I have a role to play. So um, definitely finding a balance and doing that every single day. Yeah, absolutely. It's always like, you always feel like you're playing your best when you play free and you're mm-hmm. having fun and when you don't put so much pressure on yourself. Yep. I think something I've learned is like if you put in as much, like you give it your all in the off season, then you just got to trust yourself yep. and trust that all the work is going to pay off. And I'm sure it's the same way with yep. you. Like, you do all your film work, you work with your receivers, make sure everything's like dialed in. You feel a lot better about the game than you it's would if about, you didn't. All about preparation. Absolutely. That's all it is. What's the difference between like Coach Cutter and uh, Coach Bush this year? I know it's a new offensive coordinator, maybe a different offense. Talk, walk us through that. Yeah, there's definitely some similarities, you know. Uh, there's definitely similarities of just, you know, the the being – you have to be able to lo- like lock in and um, – have a job to do no matter um how you feel no matter um what you like 
like how you feel like you can be injured or not injured but hurt you know but you still have to have to operate have to op operate the offense you know and just Bush just being that bounce like in practice he's bouncing through drill to drill just beating us to the drills and just having that intent having that energy every single day um definitely rubs off on me and you know I have to be that for my teammates you know and just bringing that energy and bringing that um like I said that that fun and but still being able to lock in is is what I'm taking to that and, and just being able to like we talked about earlier just that on and off switch you know when 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 you have your like shoes on when you hit the court like you turn into that like you you're like that mode and you know when I put my cleats on like I turn like when I put my helmet on like I'm in that mode you know I'm in that yeah. killer mindset mode so um definitely um took that from took that from Bush so um definitely excited for there's definitely similarities and that's why I like this being consistent and um yeah I'm definitely excited on that side I'm excited for you we want to kind of transition now into like how you ended up here because I know you committed like right during COVID correct mm -hmm. how did you like end up here who were some of your finalists and like were you ever to ever take a visit here yeah so definitely COVID was crazy um took a zoom my official visit was a zoom meeting that was about like two three hours long it was long <laughs> um so um yeah my top three were here San Diego State and um Wyoming and I couldn't take a visit because of COVID I mean I took a visit here but I couldn't like go on the blue I couldn't um go into any buildings couldn't go in the facility um I was like walking around like the city and like that was it um uh, I remember we me and my dad tried to go to Table Rock and you know us from Texas we ain't got no mountains so we we're driving up table we're driving up to table rock we're like oh no nah, it's a little it's a little too high it's a little too high let's go back down um so definitely um love the love the vibe of the city i mean i didn't really get to see um the football of course but um uh, love the vibe of the city and the people and um definitely prayed about it and talked to my family and i uh, felt like boise state was the right place you know and um i mean it turned out good you know so yeah definitely excited yeah that's kind of how i mean mine was i recruit i committed when i was a junior in high school i came on a visit here loved it my parents loved it you kind of get that like gut feeling in your stomach where mm -hmm. you're like this is the right spot yeah like, no one else can really take that away like this is the right spot you have great people great teammates and um, when you know that, it's a really comforting feeling knowing when you commit, you're like, this is the perfect spot. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go here. I'm going to have a great career. And everything's going to work out the way it is, even though, like, we probably didn't have the ideal starts yeah, that we wanted sure. to. But it's worked out for in sure. the end. And um, I think it's really cool how we both kind of didn't start right away, but yep. kind of moved into the spotlight and, you know, took it and ran exactly. with it. Yep. That's what it's all about. That's what it's all about. So, was Coach Harson was here when you were getting recruited, yeah. and then Coach Avalos got hired. What was that like, and why did you stay with Coach Avalos? Yeah, for sure. When I signed, when I, yeah, when I signed, I early enrolled, and just being that whole situation, I found out like on Sports Center. I was like, what? I was like, what? That's crazy. So um, I was like, wow, like. I don't know who my head coach is. I'm I'm about to come to Boise in two weeks or like a week and a half, whatever um, the time period was. And I was like, Phew. and I remember Coach D, um, he was like the intern head coach. And he had like a Zoom call uh, with us. And um, he definitely, like his communication and all that was, um, I definitely took a lot from that and this, his leadership uh, with that. And, you know, they hired uh, Avalos here. And at that time, what was crazy, I got COVID, like, the day I got here. So I had I moved into the dorms. Then I had to move out the dorms, go into the COVID uh, <laughs> dorms. And so not even – like, couldn't even see – couldn't see Avalos or none of the coaches that came. It was really – it was really a, a crazy time. But, you know, just staying – staying firm and – uh, my commitment staying firm in my belief you know and having faith in God and his plan and um yeah just all that and 
the rest take care of us. Absolutely. Yep. One, one, we have a couple more questions for you. You're, you're very tall, you're yeah. very easily recognizable. Like, where is like one of those spots where you just got recognized by some fans and maybe you weren't even wearing any BSU stuff? That's a good question. I, I would say definitely before last season, I would like get stopped at Albertsons all the time and people would think like I played basketball. <laughs> and they're like, what, like, what position are you in basketball? I was like, no, nah, I don't play basketball. I play football. Then like, uh, they're like, what is your name? I'm like, Taylor. Like, oh, you're Taylor. So um, probably that Albertsons uh, right on, right on Broadway is definitely, I get stopped a lot. Huh? I've gotten stopped there yeah. quite a few times and, <laughs> I was at Costco one day wearing just whatever, and I got stopped by like a season ticket holder just yep. randomly, and it was just just crazy how the city just recognizes exactly. us, just, just these like big names, and we're just mm-hmm. we're just these twenty year old kids just yep. living our lives, trying to go get some groceries, exactly. and do all that. I was saying, never be scared when you see us. Yeah, that's... we're we're not gonna bite. No. We 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 look we look forward to it. So definitely come say hi to us. Yeah. We'll always say hi. We'll always be ready for a picture. Exactly. All that kind of stuff. Always. So last question for you. It's a question we ask all. Of, I ask all of our guests. Um, it's my signature question. It's who in your life has made the biggest impact on you besides your close friends and family? Oh, that's a good question. I would say. I mean, I don't want to be cliche, but I would. I would say. I would say Avalos. Um, just you know, when I came in. Um, you know, him teaching me just to be organized and um, just the time management and, you know, just being just being prepared and just the the day to day grind, the day to you know, the day to day grind and the day to day things we have to do in order to be prepared on game day. But not even just on, it doesn't start in the season. It's mm-hmm. the off season too, And you just the consistency of that, you know, especially me being a freshman, like. I was he was like sat me down and just showing like showed me the way um I'm definitely definitely to this day um learned a lot and still learning from him so um I know he even still to this day he puts me in like I can talk about anything to him um uh, about life or about football and definitely just the intent and the like I said the consistency of of what he does and just the leadership he has cuz he people don't realize he doesn't have just football. He has the EQ. He has the, um, the, our film crew, our, the, our strength, strength conditioning um, staff. He has, he's in charge of all of that. And so just the responsibility he has um, definitely um, look up to, cause you know, I have um, my leadership role being the quarterback, you know, just making sure everybody's right. And like, if, if somebody's like out of line, just trying to, you know, correct them in the right way, not just yell at them, but show them the right way and show them why. So definitely that. And I think that probably ties in because he was a linebacker. He's probably the quarterback of the defense, right? for sure. So that's all we got. So thank you for coming on. Thanks Uh, for having me. Bronco Nation, I hope you enjoyed this one. This is a very anticipated interview. (laughs) We're happy to have you on. So thank you for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck this year. Thank you. Same to you. There he is, Tyson. Uh, what an interview, man. Record viewership. Uh, people are loving that, man. Uh, that was a lot of fun, man. And uh, as Wholesome says, uh, nothing better than a head coach and a QB having that solid relationship. Uh, he had to think for a little while there, but he went with uh, Andy Avalos, and I think that's never a bad thing. That uh, One of the biggest influences on his life is his uh, head coach. And especially one that uh, he didn't recruit him out of high school. You know, He came in with he recruited under Harson and you know, when he got here and earlier enrolled and didn't even know that Avalos was going to be his coach. But over the course of two and a half, almost three years, you know, they build that relationship and it's incredible to see. Awesome viewership. We appreciate it, buddy, for uh, for checking out. Did the Mariners hang on, man? Uh, they're down to like, they're in the ninth inning. Okay. Are they winning? Yeah, it's 8-5. Okay. But KC's got two on, no outs. KC, one of the worst teams in baseball. They did just beat my Cardinals, though. So, uh, excellent, uh, fantastic interview, amazing interview. Uh, great job, guys. That was good. That's the most I've heard him speak. Uh, people liking the interview, man. That was. Uh, had you been in the football facility much before that? Uh, a couple times here and there, um, okay. but 
I did get one tour, but it was a little bit ago. And so I, it was nice to be in that, that room. That's a very cool room just to see the football field. It'll be a great spot to watch the game. Now, I know it's uh, probably not going to impact you, but uh, they're hoping by 2025 to have that North End Zone project done. And that'll obviously have a training table for, for all student athletes, for the basketball team to be able to go over and eat meals over there. The other sports, um, don't know if you've seen the drawings or if they've talked to you guys much about that, but I know they're uh, obviously working to improve some of the basketball facilities as well with the practice gym and the coaches' offices and things. Um, what's just your take on some of the improvements that uh, Jeremiah Dickey and company are trying to make over there? Well, it's incredible that they've laid out a plan uh, that quickly under a tenure. I mean, had to been a lot of thought and a lot of thinking and a lot of brains together just to come up with those plans. And, you know, even if I'm not here for it, it's incredible for this university to get those upgrades because they deserve it. And, um, you know, all the support from the, uh, the Boise area and everywhere is really very appreciated and all your money is going towards a good cause. Are you a soccer fan at all? Uh, a little bit here and there. Do you know who Lionel Messi is? Yes, Lionel? I do. Yeah, he's watching tonight, man. He says, uh, watching. Oh. I, th I would thought he'd be speaking Spanish to me, but I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it's the Messi watching from Miami. So we, uh, we can check another state off the list, Florida. And, uh, he may take the cake now as our most, uh, most famous uh, person watching the show here. We've Absolutely. made it big. Messi. We, watching we have made it big. <laughs> Whoever you are that puts your name as that and commented, we appreciate it. Cause I had a nice, uh, laugh there. Uh, by the way, uh, I assume this is a, uh, someone related to Alexander Tubner, uh, the, uh, safety for the football team watching this. Let's go Broncos. Great job. Tyson, such a special family. Um, we talked to Alexander Tubner uh, a couple days ago and I know Jordan's working on a feature on him. Uh, but uh, what is the the bond like? I mean, I, I saw you, uh, you know, dapping up tail and you guys chatted a little bit. Uh, what is the, uh, how often, I know it's not very often cause you guys are both pretty busy, but, uh, they come to some of your games. You guys try to go to some of theirs, but I don't know how often you see them in class or any kind of meetings or anything, or I know, you, you know, the, the football team has their own weight room. I know. So I don't know how often you see those guys, but uh, what is the, the relationship like amongst the different athletes and stuff? I know you're, uh, dating a softball player. There's other sports and P players that are all, uh, you know, friends and together and things like that. Uh, what, what, what are the, um, what are the relationships like? Uh, they're incredible. You know, uh, looking around at all the different sports we have, we have a lot of athletes on, on campus and, uh, just to be a part of that, you know, select group is very important to me. And, you know, I try to build these relationships with as many people as I can, because I know they can be a lifelong uh, relationship, whether that's just a friend or a girlfriend like mine. And, um, it's just really important to come together as a, a student athlete group just to show support to everyone because a lot of us are going through the same kind of things, just different sports, and we can lean on each other to – we have those you know issues and we can come together and solve them together. So um, it's very important to have a very collected uh, student athlete group. Uh, our friend Clark chiming in, uh, Tyson doing amazing things. Love what you're doing. Uh, this show is happening because of Clark. So thank you, yeah, Clark. Shout and out I Clark. Thank you, Clark and ICCU. Everybody go uh, give Clark a shout out. He's with ICCU and does an amazing job and uh, very thankful. They're, I'm not sure there'd be a Bronco Nation news without ICCU either. They, they stepped up in a big way to support us, uh, helping get us on the road trips and stepping up their uh, support. So uh, when I, it's not just lip service, man. ICCU really is the best. They are investing in the local community. They're investing in high school, college athletes. They're making this show possible they're making bronco nation news possible and all the uh, expanded you know uh people we're adding to the team and things like that with with prater and jordan and stuff so uh please when you're looking for a new bank or just go make the switch even if you're happy where you're at i guarantee you'll be happier over at iccu so make the switch iccu.com is where you need to go get uh, more information and find a branch near you there's one on pretty much every corner and uh, as i said bronco nation news has uh, iccu for our uh, personal banking for the Reigns family, our business banking as well. And I know Tyson said that he started uh, there as well. So uh, Chase says the interview is well worth the wait. Best one yet. Uh, appreciate that. Uh, Colin says great interview. You're improving uh, with every episode, uh, which I do agree with that as well. So, um, and that was a pretty cool story. Uh, wild that he never stepped foot on the blue and still signed from high school meant to be. Uh, he, he was talking about it. He said he couldn't visit because COVID was going on. But the famous kind of story is, Tyson, that he was not allowed to talk to the coaches because of COVID and because it was an unofficial visit. So the Boise State coaches uh, were actually in the window of the football facility, waving out the window 
and saw Talon Green uh, and his mom, I believe, or dad uh, out there in the parking lot, and they were waving and couldn't actually talk to him due to COVID and due to the interactions and everything. But I remember some of the coaches thinking, like, man, that dude is big. Yeah, we you know, they were just kind of eyeing him. All they could do was just see, see his size and see him standing there. And, um, yeah, I mean, who – man. Wyoming was one of Talon Green's finalists. Like, I think I knew that and forgot. I don't know, but like, nothing against Wyoming. But like, could you see Talon Green playing football at Wyoming? Like, no, I think, I think PSU is right tough for him. <laughs> that is crazy. That's a, that was one of his finalists. And uh, San Diego State, also one of his other finalists as well. So, uh, who else were you? Who, who else were your finalists? Who else were you looking at? It really wasn't. Uh a race between anyone else besides BSU. Uh, I committed pretty early as a junior in high school in September. I came on an official one of the first two weeks of September, had a great time, uh, really enjoyed getting to know the team and staff. And then like four days later I committed. And so uh, it was a pretty quick recruiting thing for me and it worked out really nicely. Uh, during COVID when you couldn't play, I already had my spot kind of sealed and it was a very uh, big blessing just to be able to know I had a spot in the future. And I think it's a little different in basketball, right? Like once you commit to a school, there's not as much like coaches that still try to come in and swoop you away. I don't know if anybody else did or not, but I don't think it's, I know in football, like just cause you committed, there, there's a lot of coaches, last second offers and things that come in, but I don't know if it's just the fraternity of coaches in basketball or what, but it seems like there's once a guy verbally commits, like for the most part, the uh, coaches back off. Yeah, most definitely. You know, I, shot a text. So I called the people that offered me. I texted the ones that I've been talking to and just told them, Hey, thanks for recruiting me, but decided to go to Boise state. And, you know, I got some text back, some didn't, but uh, all the messages were, were they're happy for me and excited to see where I could go. And um, it was oh, just who really did text back. We got to know, we got to know which school. No, no I won't, message. I won't throw anyone under the bus. That's, not, that's West not, school? Come on. No, I Mount, Boise state was the only mountain West school that re really recruited me. Okay. Oh, we got to, we got to, but before the end of the Tyson Dagenhart show, at some point down the line, we got to find out which coach refused to text you back after you told him you were committing to Boise State. Let me look. I got to see if I still have it. That is crazy. Oh, you know who it was? <laughs> uh, I still see if I still have the text. I don't know if I do. Oh, my gosh. By the way, it's a full count, two outs, eight to five game, but there's two on. So uh, your Mariners are uh, trying to hang on. Oh, we just walked a guy. So it is bases loaded. Um, Mariners are up by three, but the uh, Royals have the bases loaded with two outs in the uh, bottom of the ninth. Uh, Dan saying, great interview. Uh, thanks, BNN. Uh, J.D. Price says, that when I when TG committed, began watching, following his games, excited to see us land him. So cool. Uh, Lisa agreeing with us. Thank you, Clark. Uh, yeah, we appreciate Clark. Uh, Nathan says, wait, you didn't want to go to Cheney? I did get offered by uh... – Eastern Washington, but uh, with, you know, I didn't know that Coach Leggins was going to leave, but um, I did like knowing that, like, Coach Rice wasn't going to leave and knowing that the coach was going to be there when I got there was really huge for me. Um, but Coach Riley out of Eastern is doing a great job. I really like what he's doing with the program. No doubt about it. Tyson, appreciate you, man. Awesome show. Great viewership. Again, please hit the uh, subscribe button in the corner of the screen. Uh, you can also turn on the notifications for Bronco Nation News. So anytime we go live with an episode, you'll be uh, you'll find out right away on your phone. It can jump in and watch. We have the daily morning shows, 9 a.m. every morning. Uh, tomorrow we'll have Jordan K on talking football, and then uh, Thursday will be Mike Prater. Friday is Jay Tust. Uh, still waiting on this realignment stuff. What, what do you make of this before we get out of here, man? And what do you think about Boise State and what's going to happen here? Uh, I think we're in a good spot. You know, we do have a conference that's going to stay and. It's, it's hard to see the Pac-12 go away because that's what I grew up watching. I grew up watching the Apple Cup with Wazoo and UW, and it's going to be hard seeing that game not have like the Pac-12 implications that it did in the past. And um, hoping that we can get a couple of those teams to come to the Mountain West and make it a really good conference. Um, but I think we're in a great spot and hoping that we can just you know make the best move for us. And I think uh, Jeremiah and his staff is going to make the, only the best move for us. Well, thanks again. Uh, again, everybody over at Boise State, uh, Andy Avalos, Patrick Walsh, Mike Walsh, uh, everybody that helped, Lou Major, Brooke Palco, everybody that helped uh, make the interview possible, and, and obviously uh, Nate Lowry and, and of course, uh, Talon Green for uh, sitting down and uh, doing the interview with us. Awesome interview. If you missed any of it, obviously when this broadcast ends, it will be live 
there on the uh, or be available on the uh, YouTube channel uh, to watch as well. So uh, if you're new and you just kind of stumbled across us on YouTube, thanks for checking us out. We do this every other week, although I think we are scheduled for next Tuesday again. Uh, Tyson, we're, we're still working on a couple different guests. I know we're going to have one coming up here shortly. Maybe even next week, we'll see if they both want to do it with uh, two of your coaches, uh, Tim Durier and Mike Burns. I think it would be a fun episode kind of sitting around on a patio of a restaurant somewhere have, telling stories. Uh, Tim wants the – oh, we, by the way, before we get out of here, we got to give away the golf at Timberstone. Uh, anybody anybody stand out to you in terms of the comments? I mean, I think Messi might deserve a round if he's in the Boise area or what, is going to make a trip to Boise at some point. Um, I don't know. Never it, know. You know, Tim went out on a limb and it did offer to pay for us, even though he doesn't have to. I, I think we owe, I think Tim deserves a round. I agree. Uh, we'll, we'll give Tim. Tim, send me an email, reigns at bronconationnews.com. Reigns at bronconationnews.com, Tim, and we will uh, hook you up with a round of golf at Timberstone. And uh, we'll, we'll see about uh, the schedules. We're both a little busy this time of year, Tyson, but uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do. Um, we got a couple other to give away. I'm trying to think who else needs one or wants one here. Round of golf at Timberstone. Anybody that's signed up for a subscription tonight by midnight, we also have two more autographed basketballs. I can't quite reach them from here, but uh, two autographed basketballs from uh, Tyson Degenhard. We'll hook you up there with a basketball as well if you uh, sign up. I hate to let you know, but uh, two runs single for the uh, Royals. It's now eight to seven. I got uh, right two, here. Two on, two out in the uh, in the ninth inning here. So, Nathan, if you're in the area, you had a 120. Let's, let's help you out, man. He, he shot 120. He needs to work on his game. You've been commenting a lot tonight. We'll hook Nathan up with a free round as well. Send me an email, reigns at bronconationnews.com. And we did this uh, in partnership thanks to Timberstone Golf Course. Playtimberstone.com. Go check them out and book your round. I'm hoping to sneak in maybe one more round before football season starts if we can. But they've got new carts, by the way. Have you been, I don't know when the last time was you were out there. Uh, Tyson, but they've got uh, new carts. They've got new water stations out there as well. Um, and they've done a lot of good stuff at Timberstone, updating uh, a lot of things out there, man. Oh, yeah. Uh, we went out a couple times before the Canada trip. Uh, the water stations are very nice just to have one kind of in between the front nine, and then you got the turn, and then you got one between the back nine, and uh, it really just helps out staying hydrated out in the course on a hot day, and then those carts are very, very nice. I really We really had a – uh, well, again, playtimberstone.com. Go check them out. Book your tea time. We appreciate Kelly and Tad and everybody out there at Timberstone for helping us out. We did have one final uh, avid avid viewer uh, comp that had a question that I'm supposed to ask you and the fans. Uh, what should the next giveaway be? The basketballs obviously were a huge hit. Uh, any ideas in terms of uh, Tyson Degenhart giveaways? Because I think you've done two events with the basketballs and run out of basketballs both times. Oh, man, the, those basketballs went quick. Uh I don't know if all the kids like knew who I was or anything, but they just wanted a free basketball, and I'm happy to give that to them. We got to think of something. If anybody has an idea, let us know. Maybe we'll hook you up with a with a prize uh, if you can come up with an idea for the next giveaway. Because uh, yeah, I, I can't quite reach him from here, but uh, we do have two left. And again, I got two left, and I think Tyson was uh, nice enough to agree. If you uh, subscribe to BNN, we'll hook you up with one of these basketballs. And uh, also, I had an email during the show. If uh, somebody, uh, if you already won one of them previously and sent us your address, we finally have the balls now. Tyson finally remembered to bring them to me the other day. Uh, actually, yesterday at the uh, at the uh, I screwed up on the uh, I screwed up on the uh, intro and you screwed up on the uh oh uh oh what happened in the game? It's going to extras. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Wow. Well, we'll Try let you get off. we'll let you get off so you can watch that. They must have had a no, play. It's, all, it's all right. I screwed up the intro. You forgot to bring the basketballs a couple times, so we finally have, we finally have them now. But and so if you've already won one from like a couple, of, I think last episode, uh, I will uh, get that to you here shortly because we finally do have them. So uh, awesome! Thank you again. Subscribe to YouTube, bottom of the screen. Subscribe to BNN BroncoNationNews.com. Tyson, we'll uh, have another great episode next week. Looking forward to that. Thank you again. Awesome comments. I think we might have set a record for comments tonight as well. Um, awesome stuff. Thank you to everybody. Thank you again, ICCU. And uh, just a lot of fun tonight, man. Awesome episode, and we appreciate it as always, Tyson. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. Thank you all for tuning in, and thank you, BJ, for helping me out. And I uh, hope to see you all next week. Have a great rest of your evening. Again, 9 a.m. tomorrow, we'll be back with Bronco Nation News Live. And obviously, if anything happens with the realignment stuff throughout the day, we'll pop back on as well. But uh, check out uh, the offensive line story at bronconationnews.com that uh, Jordan K. posted as well. A lot of great content, Bronco Nation News. 
Tuesday.com. And again, next Tuesday, we're back to back, right? I think we have an episode next Tuesday because we were one late, I think, on this one. So we'll uh, we'll figure it out. But uh, as of now, next Tuesday, another episode, one of the next two weeks, we'll figure it out. Uh, but uh, we'll be uh, on social media telling you about it. But uh, we'll be back here shortly. Another episode of the Tyson Degenhardt Show. Have a great rest of your evening. Thanks for watching. Tell your friends, Bronco Nation News, the Tyson Degenhardt Show. We'll talk to you later. Bronco Nation News, bronconationnews.com.